The ETH2 merge is coming soon. In fact, its deadline is looking like it's in mid-September. As you guys can see here, the prediction for the merge is going to be around September 15th. However, there are rumors of a fork coming up and there's a way you can potentially double your money. But with this merge coming up, there is a rumor of a fork that's about to happen. From one of the guys who first started the original fork with Ethereum Classic, he stated in a tweet, I fork Ethereum once, I will fork it again. Now forks can be both good and bad. It depends how you play them and how you look at them. This could be a potential chance to double your money or if you play it wrong, you can lose everything. In this video, I wanna show you guys how you can protect your assets in the upcoming merge, as well as some strategies you guys can play with the upcoming merge. Before we dive into the ways you can profit from the merge, as well as the ways you can protect yourself in the upcoming merge, let's go and give you a backstory on forks. Here is a chart on Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin Cash was a fork of Bitcoin. This happened in 2017. So the whole reason with this fork that came about was that Bitcoin wasn't scaling. It was too slow. And Bitcoin Cash was looking to expand the block space on Bitcoin. Now, old school Bitcoin did not agree with this. And this is where the fork happened between the two miners. However, if we go ahead and look at the price of Bitcoin Cash, you can see it's nowhere near the price of Bitcoin. But the interesting thing is that if you were holding Bitcoin, Back when the fork happened, you got one Bitcoin cash for every Bitcoin. So you would basically have money on both chains. And this is where you could have multiplied your Bitcoin by this simple fork. All you would have had to do is when the fork happened is take your Bitcoin cash and sell it for Bitcoin. So the reason why they're called forks and that you get money on both chains is you can look at it like this. All the blocks are being mined on this one road. However, when there is that split, it then goes into two different roads. If you had money on the first original road before the split happened, you would now have money on each chain because these are identical copies of each other. So you would have Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. Now, this is where the profit strategy would come into play. Now that you understand that, that's where you can profit off of the fork. You would sell your Bitcoin Cash for Bitcoin. But keep in mind, if you pick the wrong one, you can actually lose all your money or almost all your money doing that. I'll give you an example with Ethereum Classic where the original chain actually was depreciated against the new chain that was forked. Let me go ahead and show you the prices of Bitcoin compared to Bitcoin Cash. As you can see here, Bitcoin Cash is basically down only against Bitcoin. It's not even worth a hundredth of a Bitcoin. So if you would have chose Bitcoin Cash over Bitcoin, you would have lost over 99% of your money. This is Ethereum Classic. Ethereum Classic was the original chain of Ethereum. This one is nowhere near the price of ETH. This is currently at $41 and ETH is currently hovering around $1,900. Ethereum Classic is barely 0.022 ETH. So in this case, you would have lost almost 98% of your money. The whole reason for the fork with Ethereum was rolling back the chain with the MakerDAO hack. Long story, I'm not going to get into it. I mainly want to talk about the upcoming potential fork with ETH proof of work and ETH proof of stake. Here's a tweet from Hasu. He is very adamant about there being a fork. He said he's predicted for years that miners would fork Ethereum to extract the final juice out of their investment. This makes complete sense because as soon as proof of work goes to proof of stake, all the miners are basically put out. They need to find a new chain to mine on. This could be Ethereum Classic or other chains that favor ASIC miners. There's different types of miners that do different things. The way you can understand a ASIC versus a GPU is taking a square peg and trying to shove it in a round hole. It just doesn't work. So the things to note when this fork happens is let's say for example, you have USDC, USDT, you have some ETH, you have some Aave tokens, whatever ERC-20s or even NFTs that you have on this original chain is going to be forked and produced on this new proof of stake chain. So you're gonna have assets on both chains, but just because you have assets on both of these chains does not mean it has value. Let me give you an example of USDC or USDT. Those are centralized stable coins backed one to one. So if you have 50 billion stable coins on proof of work and you just minted 50 billion on proof of stake, do you have 100 billion stable coins? No, because Tether only has $50 billion in the bank. 
So that one-to-one -one centralization redemption, that money printed out of thin air cannot be redeemed for actual collateral because the collateral is not there. But other assets like Aave, ETH, synthetics, curve tokens, etc., those will be reproduced on the new chain. Those may have some value depending on if the protocol on that chain actually continues to draw revenue, which goes to buying back tokens on certain protocols or goes back to the stakers, etc. And as you can see here, Hasu also covers that. The chance that a major stablecoin will honor redemptions on this fork over ETH2 is not 5%, it's not 1%, it's cold zero. The reason he believes this is that if anything goes wrong with the merge, it just gets delayed until the problems are fixed and the merge happens a few weeks later. Basically, the only people that are against ETH 2.0 are the miners and mainly because it's their source of revenue. So it would make sense for the centralized stable coins to choose ETH 2.0. This is what the future of ETH was supposed to look like several years ago. So he then goes on to say, this fork chain will be a giant retail trap. Miners, exchanges, traders, all trying to talk up their own self-interested reasons. No one wants to use or build ETH proof of work. And it makes sense comparing it to Ethereum Classic, Bitcoin Cash, and Bitcoin Satoshi Vision. So now with this backstory in mind, now what? How can you play it? Well, there are actually different ways you can play this. But in my opinion, this is actually bullish for ETH in the short term. Why do I think this? Well, if people are predicting that a fork is coming up, What's the easiest way to get this airdrop or double your money? Well, you just hold a bunch of ETH or some ERC-20s and they're multiplied on this new proof of stake chain. So this is why I think short term, we are going to get a pump in ETH as like we've been seeing. Of course, this is not saying it will happen. This is just potentially where some additional demand would come from. Now, keep in mind, after the airdrop happens, that's when you'll also have the airdrop dumpers. So this could be dumping the proof of work token as well as the regular ETH because they just wanted to cash out the profits and then get their principal back. So there's different ways you can play this fork. One of the ways you can play this, whether or not you have assets on the proof of work chain or not, you can short STETH. STETH is the stake token derivative for the proof of stake chain. If you're staying originally on proof of work, in theory, the STETH has no value. It has no redemption value because it's staying on the original proof of work chain. So a way you could play this is shorting this on Aave. You can lend out some assets on Aave, borrow the STETH, sell it for other assets, provide them as collateral on Aave, or you can simply just cash out. Now bear in mind, there is such a chance as a short squeeze for other people looking to make on this play. And there probably is going to be an extremely high interest rate with a lot of other people predicting this. The second strategy you can use is longing ETH on the way up to ETH 2.0 merch, which is on the 15th of September. The main reason for this is that several people are probably going to be speculating like, hey, if I hold this token, and there is a fork. I will have assets on the proof of work and the proof of stake chain. It's basically just free money. Just think airdrop or think free money. What do people normally do when they hear that for a token? Well, they typically buy it and they hold it just to make it for the snapshot dates. Or if a token's like, hey, you better stake your token before this and this date for the snapshot, what happens? People normally buy the token, they stake it. And then usually after the snapshot, if the tokens are unlocked, they dump them. That's just how it rolls. The next strategy would be shorting ETH proof of work after the fork occurs. Now there probably will be a lot of people shorting this and there could be a potential short squeeze if people put on too much leverage. But in my opinion, I see the charts looking similar to Bitcoin Cash or even Ethereum Classic, which compared to ETH is basically down only. It's like a yield farming coin. Now these are not the only strategies. There are different ways you can play it, especially with the ERC20 tokens and shorting all these different yield farming coins. So with the Ethereum merge coming up and the fork of proof of work and proof of stake, here's what you need to do to protect your NFTs. The first thing is if you have NFTs listed, before the fork happens, it's best to delist those. That way those offers are not deemed as accepted on the new chain. Because remember, all the ERC-20s as well as the ERC-721s are going to be on both the proof of work and the proof of stake chain. The second thing you need to be aware of is a replay attack. You want to make sure as this chain is forked, you send your assets to a fresh wallet on the ETH proof of work chain before selling them. The main reason for this is an attacker can replay the same transactions 
if the IDs match on ETH proof of stake and take your assets. An example is you accept a one ETH bid on a board ape on the proof of work chain. The attacker then replays this transaction on proof of stake and he now owns your asset on both chains. Two ways you protect yourself. One, do not interact with the ETH proof of work chain. Two, if you decide to interact with the proof of work chain, make a new wallet address, then transfer the assets on the proof of work chain to the new wallet. Now that's for the NFT side. Now for the DeFi side, you need to manage your debt accordingly on DeFi protocols. If you remember back with the MakerDAO hack with all of the ETH liquidations, it caused the price of ETH to cascade. This could potentially happen with ETH proof of work with USDC going off peg or USDT going off peg and a lot of volatility with the collaterals. It could cause someone to be liquidated, which causes another and another and another. And you have these cascading liquidation events. So if you have a high debt on a DeFi protocol, there is a potential when the fork occurs that that debt that shows up on the new chain, there is a chance that when the new fork occurs, that the debt on that chain is well gone, it's liquidated. And the same goes for LP pools. If there is a cascading event and you have one token paired against another and that one token you're paired against goes to zero, your LP position basically goes to zero due to impermanent loss. So with the potential fork, you wanna manage your debts accordingly and be ready for any scenario. In fact, another extremely risky strategy, if you wanted to play it, to multiply some airdrop points would be to lend out some assets on Aave and borrow ETH against it. That way you would get ETH on the main chain because it was held in your wallet. Sure, your positions might get liquidated on the proof of work chain, but you will have a bunch of ETH in your wallet because ETH W or ETH proof of work on the proof of work chain is basically going to be deemed as the apex asset, similar to how ETC is dominant on the Ethereum classic chain. So before we end this video, I wanna leave you guys with three notes. The first is centralized tokens like USDC, USDT, they will probably and most likely basically go to zero. So manage your positions accordingly. Second, all of the ERC20s as well as NFTs will get forked onto the new chain. So if you have a bunch on the proof of work chain now, when it goes to proof of stake, keep in mind you'll have assets on both chains. In theory, ETHW is probably going to be your apex asset and most participants will sell their assets for the ETHW token and it could cause the price to go up. Now, also keep in mind, up until the potential fork or at least the merge, there's probably going to be speculation on ETH and people buying Ethereum in order to get these additional airdrop points, which then after they get the airdrop points, they could cash out and look to get their money back. The last thing I want to add is I'm unsure of this one and hopefully someone in the comments can help out with this. Do the layer twos get tokens too? As in Optimism, Arbitrum, anyone who knows this, please leave a comment in the description below. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash up the like, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification. That way you guys are notified when we make a new one. And let's go ahead and hit you with a wisdom one-liner. Proverbs chapter 12, verses seven. The wicked are overthrown and no more, but the house of the righteous stands firm. Be good, be nice, be righteous. Oh, and one other thing. If you don't do anything, there's nothing wrong with that. You'll have assets on proof of work and the proof of stake chain. If you just leave it alone, everything goes kosher. And let's say in theory, proof of work does win out, which is highly unlikely, you would be okay. Now, if proof of stake wins out, you would be okay. Because again, these chains are literally just duplicates of each other. This is just information you can use. That way, if you want to capitalize on the opportunity, here are just some things to think about. Peace.